This is the Helios 44 to 58 millimeter vintage lens. And today I'm gonna to explain to you why I sold my $1,500 Sugre 50 millimeter anamorphic lens in favor of this $60 lens. Last year, I made the leap and purchased one of my favorite lenses that I've ever owned. Made a couple videos with it, and I even filmed a wedding with it, and I just adored the image that it produced. However, it had some issues that I couldn't reconcile with. The first being the close focusing, or lack thereof of close focusing. It could not focus close at all. It was abysmal. It was like I can't even remember what the spec is. Maybe I'll throw it up on the screen, but it did not have close focusing. Additionally, I thought the squeeze factor was actually a little too much. Um, so it had a squeeze factor of 1.6 versus their crop sensor lenses, which have a squeeze factor of 1.33. And on a 16 by nine readout of a full frame sensor, then that ended up being like an ultra wide screen image, which didn't actually lend itself well to a lot of the stuff that I was doing. So when I was filming a wedding, for example, I actually often cropped in to be able to even just get a cinema aspect ratio. And even sometimes that felt a little bit too wide, like I needed more space up and down. So uh, the last couple months when I did kind of a end of year reevaluation of all of my gear and everything that I use and don't use. And I realized that the Sure 50 millimeter lens, I literally just used when I initially got it for some test projects and one wedding. And other than that, it was collecting dust. I just never used it. And I had paid a lot of money for it. And it, I was sad, but at the same time, I was just like, what am I going to do? Like, I can't, you know, <laughs> I just, <laughs> I can't use it. I ended up selling it. I took a little bit of a loss, but what I did instead is I used that money to actually purchase two lenses. First, I used that money to purchase a Laowa 12 meter, 12 millimeter F 2.8, uh, because real estate is actually something that I really want to get into it. And then I'm like, you know what? I still want something in the 50 millimeter range that's old school, has kind of some of the lens character. Enter the Helios 44 II. Now this lens initially caught my eye when it was recommended to me in a YouTube video. And another YouTuber had filmed just a short sequence of images and it looked incredible. I was like, whoa, I really need to have this lens. So I looked on eBay and lo and behold, the price for this is actually not bad. For a vintage lens, this thing only cost me about 60 bucks. Two weeks later, it arrived in the mail and my wife and I went out for a walk at the local park. And I apologize, the footage is a little shakier than I would have liked because it was cold and I forgot to bring a coat. However, this will illustrate how beautiful this lens actually is. Here you go. Man, I am so glad I bought this lens. Like, I'm so excited to just go out and shoot with it. Some of the things that I really liked about this lens, uh, the lens flaring was unique. Uh, obviously that's, to, you know, something that's like to taste. So if the lens flaring is not for you, then it's not for you. <laughs> the overall image of this lens is just absolutely incredible. So you can see that I've actually inserted just a little piece of cardboard in an oval shape. And that's kind of what helps it give it that, for lack of a better term, anamorph fake look. And I got this idea from a YouTube channel, Anamorphic on a Budget, which you should definitely check out. So as I go through those clips, here is uh, a clip that uh, you can really see that oval kind of bokeh coming through. I don't know, there's something about it. The, the foreground and background blur just looks so interesting and it just draws your eye right to the center of the frame and it just looks absolutely incredible. Uh, a couple things that I don't like about the uh, 44 2 This is where I did kind of a focus pull from the trees back there all the way up to here. The focus throw on this lens is actually kind of insane how long it is. Right now, I have it set to its minimum focus and then I'll go all the way to its maximum. So I'm turning, I'm turning, I'm still turning, I'm still turning, I'm still turning, 
I'm still turning. There it is. It finally hit the end. So clear all the way around. There's notches right here on the focus part of the lens. If you wanted to put like a, uh, you know, custom focus gears on it and then have it on a focus system, uh, then you might have better luck with it than I did. Another thing I don't like about this lens, and this is just nature of it being a vintage lens and being so old. The one I got particularly from eBay uh, has kind of a crooked aperture ring. Um, not on the inside, the inside it's fine, but on the outside it's a bit crooked. So it's really stiff to try to twist the aperture ring. Overall, I am super happy with this lens. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time. If you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing to my channel, I have more content like this coming up. I'm starting to expand to do more than just DaVinci Resolve tutorials. Comment below with a video that you would like to see from me and I will let you know if that's something I can do. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one.